ultimately leads him to weep bitterly. At the transfiguration, when Peter, James, and John saw Jesus bathed in the light of the Father's love, Peter yelled out, Lord, let us build three tents here. Peter was like David who wanted to build a house for God. But remember that God said to David, no, you don't build houses for me. I will build a kingdom for you. And so when Peter cries out his plan to build tents, the voice of the Father interrupts him. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. As if to say, Peter, it is not about what you can do for me. Allow yourself to be loved. Accept this gift of unconditional love. Accept your need for unconditional love. It is the love of the Father that brings Jesus to the cross, not Jesus' power. On Good Friday, Jesus emptied himself of his power to show us the supremacy of love. At the Last Supper, when Jesus washes his disciples' feet, Peter insists, Lord, you shall never wash my feet. But Jesus tells him, if you do not allow me to wash your feet, you have no part of me. If you don't allow me to love you, you have no part of me. To Peter, it seemed somehow improper that his Lord should love him in such a humble way. He didn't want to accept this astonishing act of love. And like his father who interrupted Peter, Jesus had to insist with Peter that he allow himself to be loved. Later at the Last Supper, Peter's, Peter makes the generous promise, even if I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. Relying again on his own strength, his own power. But Jesus knows that this will end in betrayal. Jesus knows the human heart. He knows that we are weak, we are frail, we are sinful. In our sin, we do not fully trust the love of the Father. And we are too weak to do the good that we want to do on our own. Our strength is not enough. Even Jesus on Good Friday is not relying on his own human strength. He is looking to the Father. When Jesus is arrested, Peter pulls out his sword, again relying on his power. Jesus tells Peter, put the sword away. And he says to him, Peter, shall I not drink the cup that the Father is giving me? Peter thinks that leadership means an assertion of power. But Jesus knows that the foundation of everything is the Father's love. All that Jesus does, all that he is, is an expression of the Father's love. And which apostle was able to stay with Jesus through his suffering and death? Not the strong disciple, not the brave disciple, not even the faithful disciple. The disciple who remained with Jesus is the beloved disciple. The beloved disciple who does not begin from his own strength, who simply knows that no one loves him like Jesus. So where Jesus goes, the beloved disciple goes, even to the cross, led by love, upheld by love, by Jesus' love for him. As Jesus trusts the Father, the beloved disciple trusts Jesus. It is the beloved disciple who would remind us in his gospel that Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. It is the beloved disciple who would write a letter to his community and remind them, this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that God has first loved us. And how does God love us? The beloved disciple tells us in his letter, by sending his son as an expiation for our sins. At the resurrection, Jesus will forgive Peter. Peter, do you love me? Jesus will ask. Yes, Lord, Peter will reply. And Jesus will respond, feed my sheep. If authority is based on strength and power, then Peter should be, rem be removed as the leader. He should no longer be the rock because he failed. 
His strength failed. He broke his promise. But true authority is based on love. So after Jesus forgives his betrayal, Peter truly becomes the rock, the best possible leader, because Peter has now experienced the love and mercy of the Father more deeply than he ever imagined. Peter's life, his leadership, would not be based on an assertion of power, but on a response of gratitude for the love that he received, an overflowing of the love that turned everything for Peter upside down, or rather, right side up. Because who are the authorities in our lives? Not those who lord it over us and make their authority felt. The true authority in our lives are those who love us, even if that love means correction, and especially when that love offers mercy. It is being forgiven and loved that will make Peter the best possible leader of the church. If we are like Peter, if we too forget the Father's love and assert our own power, our own plans and strategies, then in this holy triduum, may our bitter weeping be turned to joy. He does not leave us in our shame. He waits for us like he waited for Peter on the shore. He asks us, do you love me? Do you love me? And from the depth of all of our sins and betrayals, let us be shameless like Peter before the risen Jesus and say, yes, Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord, because you have first loved me. I love you, Lord, because you give yourself for me, who am nothing, who am a sinner. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. You are my rock. You are my savior.